Setting realistic goals. As we said before, goal is one to two pounds per week. But that being said, not everyone can do you know, two pounds a week. So you need to look at how many calories you burn per day on average and be honest with yourself. Like I said, this is a marathon, not a quick, not a quick sprint. So let's say hypothetically, I am a 5'3 female that weighs 120 pounds, must lose 10 pounds. And I'm you know, burning 1,100 calories per day is my BMR. Add in my activity level, I am at 1,400 calories. You can't burn 1,000 calories more per day and eat you know, 400 calories a day. It doesn't work. Same thing. Say you, you know, have a full-time job, you commute, you have friends, family. You don't expect yourself to work, do two a days, you know, get up in the morning, work out five in the morning, get your butt kicked, go to work, come back home and do cardio. Like if you can't do it, you can't do it. Like it's, it's fine. It's just, like, yeah, biggest thing is sustainability. So what you need to figure out is, okay, what is sustainable for me and what do I like doing? And then you just do that. Anything other than that is just going to burn yourself out. You're going to, you know, lose some weight, give up, go back to your old habits, gain the weight back. That being said too. So one thing people need to know, you don't gain or lose, so you don't gain or lose body fat cells. What happens is generally you're born with a certain amount of body fat cells and they just expand or contract as you get bigger. But let's say you go on a crash diet. Let's say you, you know, lose 40 pounds over two months, right? What happens is, as you start getting, say you rebound and you start getting weight just as quick and a lot quicker, your body not only makes the fat cells bigger, but they actually multiply the fat cells. So now let's say your baseline fat could be something like this, but like say it's this big, and you have 10 of them, but you have, you get the gist. Like, but say now, instead of having 10 of them, and this is the, the baseline size, now you have 15 of them and they're just as big. That's how people lose 40 pounds and gain 50 pounds back. And no, a fat cell is not this big, and you don't have 10 of them, you have thousands of them, but you get the gist. As you guys lose fat and you gain, gain fat back, especially gain it quickly, your body gets more and more inclined to gain more, gain more fat cells and gain them faster. Same thing, we talked about metabolism. So, where is it in here? Can't okay, wish this didn't fall. Uh -uh. Last one, of course. And so every time you guys go on, every time you guys go on a diet, this right here, so your metabolism, you have something called a metabolic adaptation. So every time you go on a diet and rebound, your body gets more and more acclimated to it. And so dropping the BMR, dropping the knee, dropping the activity and increasing your appetite, this happens faster and faster each time. So every single time you guys go on a diet and rebound and crash diet and do these fads, it's harder to lose weight the next time. And if you, see, you guys probably seen it where you go on a diet and you lose a bunch of weight, you try it again, it's a little harder this time. And so you guys need to say, okay, this is the last time I'm doing this fad diet. I'm not gonna do, you know, keto if it doesn't work. I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna starve, my, I'm not gonna starve myself. I am going to be sustainable, be efficient, be smart about it. And I'm gonna lose weight the smart way and not rebound. Because like I said, every time you rebound, you're just gonna, you're, it makes it harder on yourself and metabolism is lower and it's just, it's not good, right? So make sure you're being smart about it.